So this is the putting it all together lab. And so we also include in this the portion with the uh, bring your own data. So hopefully everybody brought some, but if you didn't, that's okay. Um, we, can, we have plenty of exercises to work through, so uh, we can keep you busy for the full amount of time. So the module objectives today are just to understand kind of the entire process of exploring, analyzing, and getting results out of different kinds of biological data. Um, so it really depends on what kind of data you're analyzing, what the goals of your analysis are, and uh, the kind of methods that are available to look into it further. So the hope is that with the exposure to these different methods, with these different uh, data types, that you'll be more comfortable with the process of deciding which models to use and when, and hopefully knowing exactly how to implement them as well. Um, so going back to the flow chart um, today, we're kind of focusing on the whole thing. So some of the examples will use different types of data cleaning, data exploration techniques. And then from there, depending on what sort of analysis you want to use, you'll have to go down different branches of the decision tree for do you want to do prediction? Do you want to do uh, linear regression? Do you want to do estimation interpretation? Uh, all those different things that we've been discussing. And then beyond that, there's also, um, this isn't really an exhaustive flowchart of different statistical analyses. There's still areas of statistics that we haven't covered, um, which is just impossible to go through at all in just a, such a short course. So there are different areas that, of course, you can explore, but hopefully we've given you a solid understanding of these areas. And the hope is that then you can apply the uh, methods that you've learned here to those other areas. So basically what we're going to be focusing on is what clues can you kind of parse out from your data to try and understand which model to then use. So as we discussed earlier, one of the parts that's really important for that is you need to be comfortable with exploratory data analysis, because if you can't really understand your data, what it's telling you, uh, what kind of uh, shape dimension it has, number of variables, what kind of variables those are, the data that's stored in them, and kind of the biological interpretation of those variables, then it's going to be very difficult to choose an appropriate model. It also is important important to understand how complex your data is. So even if it is high dimensional, it might not actually be all that complex. And so that really also drives the choice of which model to use, because if you use a very complex model for large but not complex data, you might not get that great of results. But if you use sort of a dimensionality reduction technique with this large but rather simple data, and then pass that into a more simplistic model, you might actually get better results in the end. And so there is this part where you need to understand your data, how complex it is, what is it telling you? And then you also need to try different models. You need to validate your ideas. Does the more complex model actually work better on the validation set or does it work worse? So these are just things that you need to explore and experiment with because sometimes, well, many times, you're not actually going to be able to just inherently know straight off the bat. You're going to have to do this iterative process of exploring, trying, and testing. So how do you actually go about doing it? And how do you become comfortable with it? Well, the best way is to learn by doing. So as we've been trying to do here, we've been trying to show you different examples, uh, different scenarios of doing these analysis, um, different cases when things might not work, when they do work, and uh, other scenarios where they may be applicable. But of course, it's not exhaustive, as we've mentioned. And so it's one of those things where you really just need to kind of start exploring it yourself. You need to start doing it yourself. You need to start thinking about the problems without somebody, you know, helping you out every step of the way, because I find that's really the best way to learn. You need to kind of sit down and really think about it. So what methods have you learned? What are you familiar with? What type of data are you working with? And how might they be applicable to the data that you're working with? And then from there, you can try, uh, try out a few different models, see if they work. If they don't, that's okay. Uh, there's always uh, more models to try 
And so again, it's this iterative process of just best way to do is best way to learn is by doing, and you just need to iterate through different versions until you find something that does work. So with that, uh, we're going to get into the lab 